All right, let's get into this high rise. Those opening dual win percentage, and when this this team formed, right, they made a couple of roster changes. This duo in Jonas Steves and Kremp, they like to get very active on the map together. Jonas Steves and Kremp. This is a double nade that uh. I don't know who did it first. I think it was New York did it first. You double nade the guy instantly going towards uh, the right window. So that's what Ann and AG are doing here. I guess they either one guy hit him or no one hit him. That's why this guy kind of backs up, but oh, I guess Ant did hit him. I'm guessing uh, AG missed his nade. So that was going to be our first blood pick for this round one. That's what we were looking at because we knew that this guy went to the right window instantly. We have Brandon watching the cross. And then last guy is, is Ken. He's going to watch our, our side underground in case they hit underground. So he watches those two lanes. From this, Ant smokes. Smoke mid. Run down the stairs, climb up B. That was the strat here. So again, EWC, we don't have the smoke to work with, so we can't do plays like this, unfortunately. But... Yeah. So Brandon goes one for one. They actually trade. They actually trade kills with each other. So B Street is completely wide open. And has already made his way through. He's going to trust AG to plant the bomb here. And he's going to make a play through their base. Dan turns around, but it's too late. And gets the kill. Now it's a 3v2. Hit some early shots, has the MCW, you stay a little bit patient if you were Shotzi. Now they're trying to catch him. And this man does such a good job of buying. And buying time there is, is massive because, you know, we just get the trade battle. Now it's, now it's 2v1. Ken wins a good fight. Not the most fun for the chain link. So a really good round one. Obviously, Ann has a smoke. He can make a play, like, pushing through mid, going underground, going through their base. Why no smokes at EWC? We were playing on a different build. So it was only allowed on invasion. Because it was bigger. Like the smokes were, were much bigger and, and stuff. This was a, a strat that we were saving for champs, or actually, I don't know. Yeah, we, I guess we were saving it for champs, but I think Ant and AG had developed it right before champs. So what they were going to do is hide underneath underground over here. Well, uh, AG's going to hold the right side underground, but he's, he's like prone sitting in the wall. So you can't, if you're just going to run a, like this way, you couldn't really see him. And Ant goes up top to this corner and he's watching the left side. So we're waiting for, we're basically waiting for them to get aggressive and make a play through underground. I was just trying to get Chen, I'll spawn. Pretty slow round here for LA Thieves. Just really taking their time. So they're just camping. Nobody they end up aggressive. going towards the left side. Like you see Jodeci is going to jump down here. He actually stuns this. Right so he stunned nades, which is... For AG, he's like, dude, there's no way he just tacked me out playing this corner. <laughs> so this is like insane because like it was a gonna be a cool strap, but they actually <laughs> Joe actually tacks this out. Fortunately, Brandon gets picked over here to the left side. I personally, Brandon could have probably played this better because, in my opinion, in this strat, the first kills that should be going down or first deaths should be one of these two. Brandon should be just playing safe back here. There's no reason he should be taking a chow or, or being in one of the first gunfights. Because now this just makes it every, like awkward as fuck for, for AG and Ant. Ant can kind of climb up to the BZ spot. He gets a kill on bomb. Fortunately, Ken tries to activate and he, he can't get the kill. 3v2, they know both of us are underground, so it's kind of just, kind of just chalked. Nothing really Ann and AG can do. 
these gunfights. Nasty finds one, now it's all down to Fred. Yeah, after that tough round one gunfight, he has bounced back two in this one. Ghosty with the final Thieves answer in two right. It gets Offense back over to Texas. A little two-man game. Get more involved. Offense back over to Texas. A little Still look to get more involved. Offense back over to Texas. A two We're nading underground over here. Man game. So on this strat, Ken at the green hut. AG green tarp watching the bomb cross. Um, Anko's low blue. Brandon's going to go uh, left street. Oh no, he, he's not going green tarp. He's actually top heli here. My bad. It looks like he's green tarp, but he actually goes to the top. so far from thieves as they look for Ang yeah you know he loves to do this Fred Josie's gonna challenge as they look for Ang it's a big first blood by uh, AG he kills Dan now he can start getting onto bomb he can kind of stay towards top heli but he has to be careful because they know where he is they actually just camp towards A this is crazy we got another kill towards B we know last two guys are A or sorry yeah, we know the last few guys are A. We can start planning. Ken can try and make a play through their base. Actually, we actually don't start planning. I think we're just waiting for Ken to do something. And Brandon, Brandon gets picked. I, I don't know. This this I didn't like because we get the 3v2 and we kind of just all split. And because we, we don't have their side, this guy's just able to go up their street and, and kill Brandon for free. Because Ken went underground. But we know where he is. We can play for him and gets a kill. So now it's 2v1. So regardless, even though Brandon dies, it's it's straight out. Now 2v1. We go towards A, plan it. We see this guy towards mid and it's, it's just a free round. HVZ, appreciate the sub with Prime. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Question, it's, a, it's for S&D. Did the boys prefer high-rise over Rio? I knew from my streams that they absolutely hated high-rise, so when I saw I got it, we, I got worried. Yeah, they, they preferred high-rise over Rio. That's, that's why we played it. If they preferred Rio, we would not have played high-rise. Play it perfectly. Yeah, I thought he's so close to getting out, right? I mean, you have a little uh, a wobbly shots on a shot, so you just maybe get close to getting out right I mean, you have a little uh, a wobbly shot this is a big part of our defensive strats at champs smoke mid you smoke mid pretty much every defense and just fuck with them because now they can start double crossing here or they can not cross if they want but as long as you maintain a default smoke mid um we we're just trying to fuck with people so you smoke mid Ken and, and AG, or sorry, Ken and, uh, and, and uh, Ant are now going to work towards the left side. AG can go heli stairs and watch, watch for bomb. Actually, yeah, they, they don't push through A, but they get Ant to the barrels. I think they're just, yeah, they're just trying to get Ant to the barrels, play progression. I thought they pushed through this round for some reason. Cram some of mid. He's gonna go towards the. Oh, he actually sees AG here. He's just like one waying it. But Ken and AG are both looking at this, and Ken gets a free bud. They still have to kill AG. I don't know how he stays alive there. He stays alive at the heli stairs. And is still holding the left side. AG actually gets a kill with the nade instead. And still holding the left side, but this guy's going underground. So it's pretty sketchy, but... Dan actually gets a two-piece for that. That's a ballsy play to go underneath like this. A 2v4. 
But he makes a play, gets behind both of them, kills both, so it's a 2v2 now. Joe tries to get the bomb, Brennan's just covering that, he's just staying alive in our base. Now there's just not enough time for him to, to plant, so we're good. Double chop B Street. Ken and, and Brandon get this guy super weak, or get them both super weak, and they're able to get the kill on uh, on Kremp. Huge first blood. Joe is actually activating green tarp after AG gives it up. So look at this. Both of them are basically. I think they're. Are they double challenging bomb cross, or they're just they're just smoking? Is Ant smoking? Yeah, Ant smokes this. AG's watching the smoke too, just in case they push, and then he backs up, and this guy pushes through our smoke. Now Ant's gonna go underneath and try and make a play in their base. Ken, with really good eyes, watching for Joe to seize over here. He gives us related information to to AG. Ant gets another free kill because he made this this play to go up underneath. They're not looking for it. Nasty dies for it. We know this other guy is either A or low blue, and last guy alive is going to be, uh, what is it? Is that top heli after that? Oh no, sorry, that's low blue. These guys are trapped. We can kill them. Last guy alive is low blue. It's Dan. Actually gets a kill, but I think Brandon just wins this 1v1. Yeah. He knows he's weak, so he just shots him. Really good shot. So we go back to the regular strat again. Or not the regular strat. We go back to the... Uh... Oh no, this is... Sorry. I saw the two guys over here in this corner. I thought it was the same AG and strat. This isn't... This is a... This is a bomb chow. So we go, double get on bomb. We hop on on top of the railing. We're just countering this entire side of the map. But they actually go to the left side, which is funny. But now we have so much uh, aggression towards the B site, so they have to basically push through A if they're going to do something. Can get shot off back down from here, so we know they're at the A site. We just tried to blind counter, it didn't work. So now they're all at A. Brandon gets a kill too for it. Now they're wrapping back towards the blue side. Or sorry, sorry, from blue to, to B side. They pick off Ant and they pick off AG. This just hurts, because like we have the first blood, but we're not we're not getting enough info on where they're at that they're just able to walk onto you know, walk underground and walk onto the site without us knowing. And they get two kills for free. This this should have been a five one lead for us. And said it, you know, they win this round four two and we end up losing this entire game. Yeah, that 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 two piece on the B bomb just kind of opens everything up. Who calls these plays during the matches? It can uh, mostly mostly Ant, but if there's something that a specific player wants to do, they'll just call it out. So this is basically that same, uh, was it, round one strat? Smoke middle, double go through the underground stairs to, to hop up to B. Ken goes and watches underground push like he did there. He team shots with Ant on this guy underground, and we get a first uh, first blood for free. 
This is a really nice strat. How did Joe kill Ken? Oh, he just he just runs to the smoke and he one ways it. I guess AG doesn't see him because AG's top top heli. I thought Joe Deceive's dead to rights. He's somehow still up as Shotzi continues to look for him. And now gets progression for the B Street, but we still need to make way, ways to the bomb. And actually gets super pro progression. Look at this. The gunfight's going down middle. He, he just walks up the B Street. Five and seven are wrapping towards A side. He gets a kill on Joe Deceive's. We have a free bomb plant now if we want it. And Ants is, is now in their base and they have to worry about him. AG wants a teamwork with with uh with Ann over here. I think I think we should just win it for the bomb plant. We try and do way too much here. I guess as soon as we get this kill on Joe Deceives, we we should just start working bomb, watching over him on bomb. I didn't I didn't like how we played this. Like I get the idea of like like both AG and Ant want to push this guy like just try and get something in their spawn but like we already got the advantage 3v2 we might as well just get the bomb down and, and watch over him like we already basically have we already basically have the entire bomb site to ourselves I'm not sure if we know that two guys are A side but Regardless, all of us are in, in this area, you know? We know they're not top propane, so we don't have to worry about that. We know that they're not on the ground or like on the B site. Or if they are on the B site, we just trade them instantly. So, yeah, not the best. Planning the objective or, or what, but... Once again, defense smoke mid. Instead of double pushing this uh, to go like heli stairs and to go low blue or to get on the, the barrels, uh, I think Ant goes to top heli here, and AG still stays on the left on the oh, sorry the right side. Yeah, this is another thing. It was just again the, the smoke change kind of fucked us on the map. I didn't realize how much it did, but it really did. I'll, I'll, like a lot of our shots were based on the smoke. I think Ken doesn't realize that Ant ha doesn't have the, the top heli push here. Ken's just top A, propane, chilling, watching for, for anyone going towards the B side, and he just dies for free, top heli. I think it must have been a miscommunication between him and Ken, or yeah, between him and AG, or him and AG, between Ken and Ant, because... You know, Ant goes to top heli at the start of the round, but then goes to outer and plays his like just one off spot here. So this is just the opening that we don't have at all. So Ken was probably like, what the fuck? I thought you had it. So miscom there. And Joe Deceives actually gets two over there. That's probably just the round there. Yes. Too many times. But if we've learned anything throughout the course of this map too, the first Double chow the bomb cross. This is another shot. First, double nade underground. Joe Deceives is weak. You see he's 83 health. He's going to try and get onto the bomb. We're already green tarp though. Look at this. He even jumps on top of that thing. I don't know. He mantled on top of it, but regardless, if you try to get onto the bomb site through the windowsill, we had two people looking at it. Free for his blood. Really good job. And once again, doing the same type of route, low underground. Um, AG has bombed this scenario, so he's just he's just waiting for AG to to rotate over. How does Dan get a kill here? Oh, he goes one v two and actually kills Brandon somehow. I guess both of them both of them weren't hitting their shots or something. Because it was a two v one. Now we've got a full bomb control. Ants already up here, sitting in the corner. We can go planet. AG gets it down. 
That'll be the play now. So you get the bomb plan in. And staying in the in the sack corner. Or sorry, not the sack corner. He's staying in the this left corner here, watching mid. We have one that top row pain, and I think where's Ken? Is Ken low elevators? He, try to hold. he has to be, right? Yeah. This is a good smoke. He doesn't see uh, Kremp cross over here, so he's assuming that he's still there, but Kremp uses the smoke effectively. Ant gets a kill on guy jumping windowsill, so now it's a 2v2. Ant gets another kill through the smoke, and then we know last guy alive is there, and AG can just uh, jump down on him. Oh. I forgot this happened. I thought AG won this. That's my bad. How did AG not kill him? AG didn't have to chow that, by the way. I mean, he's he's thinking this guy's super weak. He's thinking he, he hit someone one burst with an renegade and he's good. I mean, he's had 18 health. He thinks he. I think he thinks it's, he's a lot more weaker from what he did over here. Like, look at how many. I mean, he shots a. Like two or three bullets. He's thinking he just one burst and with ready right here. I don't mind the chow. Counter B over here. We get AG to the elevators. We get Ant to the top propane. They're kind of doing the same thing where. They're actually, you know, pushing double underneath underground, and, and Brandon actually dies for it. How does Brandon get picked? Oh, he, he gets wall banged. So he peeks this for a second, tries to escape, gets wall banged here. That's a crazy first blood. That's the one blind spot. This closed side underground is so important. It's the one blind spot because it's, it's based on... Because of because of where AG and Ann are playing, Ken or sorry not Ken, Brandon has to kind of go back and forth to the street and to watch underground, and he has to like overextend to watch the close side underground too. So if he tries to overextend like he did there, and they see him, they could just wall bang him too. I guess that was I mean that's a huge wall bang. That's three first deaths there for Dashy throughout this map. Times he's been the one getting caught on that B street and now Joe to see maybe gonna take a Joe can now play inside our base. Ken's looking at it. And then we are gonna keep it. really good job by Ken. He holds this, he knows that they're gonna try and wait for Joe to see to make up some sort of play. And Ken reads them perfectly. Asian and are still staying top top B because they're just they're making them make a play. Make L E T plan A if they're gonna go A. If not, if they're gonna go B, then we'll we'll kill him. That's their thinking. There's all process here. Now this is just awkward for Ken because like he wants to take space somewhere, but they don't have any like information for him. They're just like, oh yeah, they're probably a side. So he's gonna try and make a play low blue. And actually gets a kill on guy, kind of overextending and trying to push our base. Ken gets a one on one kill. Great retake. Three v one now. We just have to find nasty. Really good job. I think it, who, who dies over here? It's a 3v3 retake this is Cramp. He just doesn't realize that we're still. Uh, he's probably expecting that we had moved and we're going towards their base, or like Ken was staying in the base the whole time. But you know, we were still B side, so we just shoot him in the, in the back. It's a 3v3 retake opportunity. All right, round eleven. And says, fuck it, I'm going to hit underneath round 11. This is crazy. And uh, because he's able to get this position, Dan can't see him here. So Dan's doing the, the jump, but you know, Ann is, Ann is already here. He insta hit the shit. On the other side, Kremp has already made moves to get pushed up here. Uh, up B Street. So they start double challenging the B Street guy. Number seven, but they don't know that that Kremp already has this. 
You can kill AG for free. Brandon gets a quick trade, but you know, the damage is kind of done because now you know where Brandon is. Ant gets a kill in their base too, but again, he's weak. It could be traded instantly. Nasty goes for the trade. Now it's a 2v2. We do know where Nasty is. Again, gets this progression up until their, their box corner. And I don't know how Joe Deceives knows he's here. Does he see him? I still don't know how this how he, he knows that Ken's here. Because Ken moves up to this corner. Is it because he jumps right here? Because I, I don't know why Joe is keen on looking behind him like this. Nasty sounded him. Is that really what happened? Damn, that sucks if, if that happened. Let me see how Nasty's arrow reacts. Yeah, it does. It does seem like he sounded him because he he's playing this like someone's either is someone's around here. Oh, that sucks. I thought Ken made a play in the moment, but they just, they just find him out for free and get the trade. So it was like a constant trade battles in this round eleven. Now it's just a one v two for Brandon, and they uh they're just gonna chow together as he's going towards blue. So unfortunately, the S and D didn't go our way. Now we go down 0-2. And we'll go, we'll go into the crotchet control.